Okay, so in case any of you guys attempted to write any of these SAQs, I uh, just wanted to quickly go over um, some possible answers, some good answers that you could put for these. So the first one is from Margaret Sanger. Uh, the source actually tells us a lot about the document. Uh, it's titled her comment on women's right to birth control, January 1928. Um, and part A, we're asked to explain how the events described exemplify a larger historical pattern. Well, the first sentence, women's desire for freedom is born in the feminine spirit. Uh, she goes on to talk about how women are yearning for more freedoms and equality in society, but society puts up this barrier of pregnancy and pressure to have children and start families and be wives that uh, causes them to not have all the freedom that they desire. So a larger historical pattern, if we're talking about 1928, this is on the cusp of World War I, where women were you know, working more and making more money uh, during the war. Um, but probably more obvious would be the 19th Amendment getting passed in 1920, where women get to vote and have more equality uh, in the political process. They're becoming flappers and you know, not having to dress so conservatively. So anything about women having more equality in 1920s or fighting for more rights um, would work there. Part B, explain one major development from 1920s not mentioned in the excerpt that supports her argument. So again, her argument is that society is putting up these barriers, so something that supports that. Well, even though women are working in the 20s, um, they're still mostly just nurses and teachers and these other jobs that traditionally women were working at the time. Um, so, and, and a lot of them were working to support the children that they had. Um, even women working in factories were still kind of expected to do that, um, probably because they had children and the man couldn't make enough money. Um, so they all had to pooled together as like a family effort. And then part C, briefly explain one major development from 1920s, not mentioned the excerpt that refutes her argument. So saying something like, no, women aren't having these barriers put up and you know, they can choose to have um, children if they want to, would either be probably the 19th Amendment, which gave them the right to vote, or the whole flapper girl movement. <clears throat> Let's look at question two. Uh, this one, we have a picture. Um, it is from a stand in Dayton, Tennessee, selling evangelist T.T. Martin's Hell in the High Schools during the Scopes trial, 1925. And we see that, I guess this was a book or something, T.T. Martin Headquarters Anti-Evolution League, The Conflict, Hell in the High School, or maybe it was just some group. Nope, books, Brian's books, okay. So, um, part A, Briefly explain the point of view of the men in the picture regarding, regarding one of the following, modernization or traditionalism. Well, this is from the Scopes trial, which is all about teaching evolution in public schools. John Scopes was found guilty of breaking this state law that said they will not teach evolution in schools because it um, contradicts the creation theory in the Bible. And so when it comes to modernization, this new modern way of thinking, um, these men would be against it. So what's their point of view about modernization? They think it's bad. Traditionalism, they think it's good. They want to stick to tradition. Uh, you know, America being this Christian nation, at least at the time, and um, at least that's what they believed. And they wanted to keep those American traditional Christian values. So moderniz modernization, bad. Traditionalism, good. B, briefly explain one development in the 1920s that supports your choice in Part A. And Part C says the same thing. Briefly explain one development in 1920s that supports the choice you did not pick. So what's something that supports they didn't like modernization? What's something that supports that they did like traditionalism? Um, well, the Scopes trial for modernization. Obviously, these guys are buying this book that's anti-evolutionist. You could talk about the Scopes trial in detail because if you answered Part A, you wouldn't really have had to mention it. Um, you could just talk about the picture and why they're there. Uh, but the Scopes trial would be an easy answer for Part B. And then Part C, a couple of things here. Traditionalism, you might bring up the Red Scare and how they were probably also supporting uh, anti-communist sentiment or um, the Great Migration, anything racial. This is Tennessee. 
So you can talk about the KKK, rise of the KKK, and how they're trying to keep Amer American tradition by limiting immigration. Um, can kind of go a lot of different ways with, with the traditionalist one. Um, or, well, no, it was Great Awakening doesn't work. No, never mind. Question number three. Uh, Great Migration. We're showing the movement of black Southerners to places like the West and the Northeast. Um, and so part A, we're supposed to explain one important way in which the Great Migration transformed the Midwest. Well, um, higher black populations is the easy answer there. Um, you know, the Great Migration was all these black Southerners leaving because of lynchings and the KKK and um, the resurgence of like really violent racism. So they moved to northern places and places out in western uh, territories, well, states now. Uh, B, briefly explain one important way in which the Great Migration transformed the Northeast. So Northeast, that's pretty much trying to refer to, you know, uh, Harlem and, and New York. Uh, talking about the Harlem Renaissance, that would be a really easy answer there. Um, or the early civil rights movement, talking about the NAACP and Webb Dubois, who was in Massachusetts, I believe. That'd be another easy answer there. And see, one important historical factor that led to the Great Migration, uh, the resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan, um, Jim Crow laws, um, lynchings, anything like that. And then finally, question number four. This has to do with Sacco and Vanzetti, the two Italian immigrants who were arrested for robbery and a lot of people think were wrongly accused or at least definitely had a fair, unfair trial. And so the first one, John Peso, saved Sacco and Vanzetti He's writing how these immigrants are like the immigrants who built America. They were born somewhere else. They came here. They got good industrial jobs. They like America. They want to be here. And uh, they've been treated badly. They've been paid really low. And now they're about to be killed by the country that they wanted to come to so badly. And he's saying we should save them. The next is a poem by Robert Whitaker about the trial of Sacco and Vanzetti. He is agreeing here, basically. He's saying Massachusetts... You know, you kill a lot of witches in Salem, um, and, and the Quakers have done a lot of hanging in the past, and now you're about to commit another crime by uh, killing Sacco and Vanzetti. The last part even says, like, you're the culprit, uh, not these guys. So, part A, one major difference or similarity between the two excerpts. Um, there's not a lot of difference between the two other than the other than one's a poem and the other one's just kind of a argumentative essay. So it's easier to go similarity on here. Similarity, they both think Sacco and Vanzetti are innocent. Um, B, briefly explain one development in the 1920s that supports Paso's interpretation. Um, so something that supports that they think they were innocent. Um, you could say something like uh, nativism in the 1920s. Uh, we had immigration quotas, so that'd be a, a specific development, um, something that tried to limit the amount of immigrants that were coming from Europe. Um, so you could you could mention that, or the KKK, how they focused more on immigrants, or at least they included their focus on immigrants in the 1920s. And then C, briefly explain one development in the 1920s that supported Whitaker's interpretation Again, they were similar interpretations, so if we're not using immigration quotas, we could use the KKK or just the Red Scare in general and talk about how the Red Scare created a lot of paranoia when there really wasn't many communists living in the United States. <clears throat> so you probably came up with some better answers. Uh, if you want to ask me about them, then as always, email me um, or send me a message to the canvas.